Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday, 29th of April, 2021, episode six of Hindsight. We're gonna take a look at what moved on the markets today and what could have been traded better. We have Kogan, BIR, RXH, NOV, and BD1. I don't know what the company names of these tickers are. They're just tickers to me. Three letter codes, it's all I care about. We have Kogan here opening up on a gap up. Uh, this is following on from yesterday's really strong rally. I was expecting to continue on. It looked really good on the match, it looked really good on the open. And what we have is a long position. We've got a scale in here and then all out on pretty much the next candle. And I'll show you the VWAP bands to show you the reason behind that. I probably shouldn't, once this was starting to cascade down, I probably shouldn't have added long. Ultimately, it didn't matter. Added a VWAP, closed out on the retest of VWAP. And for some reason, it decided to, to just tickle above like six ticks for some reason before coming back down now i was waiting for this horizontal before opening another position there was a horizontal here i was looking at waiting 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 and then this breakdown came just market ordered somewhere around 1101 i think it was uh, and got in here and waited and unfortunately this didn't end up being a significant trade because the the trade was really to let it go as long as possible and this was a key key point here a higher high was looking to be formed, came down, a higher low was formed, and once I spotted it, look, the exit probably should have been here in hindsight at 1083, but really I saw it coming out uh, to create a new high or a higher high coming. It was just obvious. Uh, it was setting up for it and just scaled out from around 1086 and just scaled out. Couldn't take the position all at once. So I was happy with that. Um, look, it's only 10 ticks or so. It, in theory, look, there's this horizontal here, roughly. That could have probably been a take profit target. But you know what? I was willing to let it ride for a bigger swing. And ultimately, the technicals said, right, this was the exit point. Anything above uh, 1089 was the exit. Really only rode about 10 ticks. Not that exciting, but at least at least the trade was correct, in my opinion. Moving on to BI BIR. This one was particularly disappointing. Uh, this, there was an exit here at 2.8 i was first in queue at 2.8 got in at 2.1 bailed out at 1.8 here there was no choice um really it just it got ugly and you can see in hindsight it did end up rallying again but when you look at the book when you look at the replay there is absolutely no other situation uh, nothing else that could have been done except to hit out at 1.8 Otherwise, risk going to 1.7, then 1.6, then 1.4. And, you know, when the bid's getting hit at 1.4, what the fuck do you do with your position? You know, you're going you're to get left holding the bag from 2.1 to 1.4. That's, that's a tragic loss, right? 2.1 to 1.8 isn't great either. The plan never really is to um, do anything worse than break even, right? It's about riding the momentum. Uh, the the sell target was 2.8. That would have been a brilliant 7 ticks. That's a, that's a huge gain from 2.1. I didn't get there. It all kind of just happened a little bit too quickly, I guess. The book was really thinned out from memory. And ultimately what happened was a huge seller popped up around 2.5, spooked all the orders here. All the orders disappeared. Uh, literally, line by line was disappearing. 2.0, 1.9, 1.8 was going as well. Uh, these weren't even getting hit. The bid wasn't even getting hit. People were just getting spooked and pulling their orders. Next thing you know, you see it collapse down to 1.4. So technically, I think the, the decision was correct. Uh, even though this hit 2.2, there was, there was nothing at 2.1, there was nothing at 2.0, nothing at 1.9. There was no choice but to hit out. It, it sucks, but this is what you get with a company that's 80 mil market cap and 2.0 million market cap. Super tiny, super thin. Uh, look, not trading big size or anything. I think it was like 2.5K or something. It wasn't in terms of dollar value it wasn't that big of a trade um obviously with these kind of gappy shitty little stocks you're not going to put on size it's it's just dumb but did identify that despite the fact that it rallied came back down there was a consolidation phase now 2.6 would have been ideal right i was eyeing it off i was umming and ahhing the the book was looking tragic but sometimes you know with a stock that's this thin as long as the bid is not getting hit to the downside 
it's probably not too bad of an entry here at 2.6, 2.7. But ultimately, I did end up waiting and getting in on this consolidation instead of this first initial consolidation, which was much tighter and smaller. Uh, it felt a bit safer here. We've got high volumes coming in. There was uh, a lot of reloads here at 3.0 and 2.9 from memory. Uh, so I just waited at 2.8. Uh, there was a lot of opportunities at 2.8. And then all of a sudden, just 2.9 and 3.0 stopped getting reloaded. So add on, add on, and on the final push, add on. I think that might be, yeah, I haven't got the timing exactly correct, but I believe it was here where I bought it three. Uh, so three entries, uh, hit out half the position here at 3.4. Uh, I noticed the movement, you know, there was very little in terms of consistency with movement, right? You've got a high high volume break through this sort of consolidation phase, right? There's a little consolidation here as well, 3.2. Um, you got these high volume pumps like this one and this one, and the movements are just really weak. It was very bizarre considering the shares on issue. Uh, it should have moved a lot quicker, a lot sooner. So I was one of the first people to hit out at 3.4. I hit out twice and then third time at 3.0. So I initially started the downwards momentum and you could just see the panic and FOMO. And really, I was the first one to hit out at 3.0 as well. And it just a massive cascading effect on the book. And there was just no recovery from there. If we open up VWAP, uh, I think it crushed below. Yeah, just well below VWAP. There was a little bounce that occurred, but, you know, that was it. It looked actually like it was going to recover. There was some bizarre trading going on here in this range on pretty good volumes too. But I did. I, there was nothing there. Technical. In terms of technicals, there was just nothing that I could really identify there to uh, justify an entry. Maybe a break above VWAP, but even then, it's it's such a shitty little trader. Um, I got my pump consolidate. Uh, this initial trade here in the morning, that was just trying to follow momentum. And I, was, I would have been cheering if I got my 2.8. That would have been a perfect pick. But you know what? Sitting first in queue in the book, didn't get it. No choice but to hit out. RXH, this one was disappointing because I kept missing on my fucking bid. <coughs> so, uh, spotted this one, I think it was around 2.9 when this volume came in. Uh, I saw it mentioned in chat. Put in an order at around 3.9, 4.2-ish, and then I was like, fuck it, let's market order our way into 5.4. Great. I sat at 5.9, didn't get hit. I, I can see this tickled 5.9, but I don't actually recall any shares going through at 5.9. Uh, from memory, I was first in the book again on this one. And of course, no choice but to hit out when things went south. A big order came in and just killed momentum and just uh, actually didn't just kill momentum. 5.7 was loading up and there was a two pip spread. And someone marketed from fucking 5.9 down to 5.0. So just just like nine, eight, nine lines just wiped in one market order. Yeah, it's just really fucking shit to trade. Um, seeing these kinds of things really sucks and it serves me right to be honest um, you know playing the chase game here like a fucking idiot but what you're gonna do you know I was trying to scalp just a couple of ticks I uh, could have hit out at 5.7 uh, score like three or four ticks or whatever it was I uh, didn't get it. it was sitting in the book and paid the price for it so I didn't didn't scalp it properly uh, that's just what it is I, I, I saw the book thin out um, someone marketed it to 5.0 and then someone sat at 5.0 Five, I think, like a small order and then a big order at 5.7. Should have amended the order, hit the 5.7 because there was like a fucking five, six tick spread below on the bid. So that was the decision there. That 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 was the correct decision. Wasn't made quick enough, unfortunately. So uh, tried to catch VWAP bounce, ended up with zero ticks. Um, really, when it hits VWAP, it should move, right? This this grind sideways on VWAP is garbage. It's never good. It's never ever good. And that's pretty much it for RXH. Um, there really wasn't anything left. If you just check the VWAP bands, there's nothing, just crash. Uh, Novati Group. This one, wow, this one gapped up quite a fair bit. I don't even recall what the news announcement was, uh, but it did a nice gap up. That's all that matters, really. I think this was the the Split It Payments Group um, announcement or something. There was some sort of partnership. I think this might have been it. Don't recall exactly. It doesn't matter. Um, bought the match at 70. Saw it fucking tank down to 62 almost instantly. Uh, yeah, shat my pants on that one. Managed to close out for one tick loss at 69 and a half. 
Uh, so that was more luck than anything. Ended up being like a real bizarre um, wedge or triangle. I don't know what the fuck was going on in this one. This is just some dog shit trading, to be honest. What we have here is an opening horizontal, a break to the upside. This is where I asked my broker to get some fucking borrow as it was climbing in this area, just heading up. Um, ready for this break here at 70. For two, three minutes, it went sideways, right? That's not good. We've got opening volumes, right? It's not even 10.30. We've broken up to the upside and consolidating just above the resistance, which is now support. Absolute garbage. You never want that situation. When you want to, when you get a break, you want an actual break, maybe a low volume pullback, maybe retest 70 and then swing back up. What you don't want is three candles absolutely hugging the nutsack of 70 cents. That is tragic. Uh, so did manage to score a short uh, at si uh, 69 and a half. And the plan here was the opportunity to add on short at VWAP. Didn't actually get there. Didn't quite reach it. It was off by a couple of ticks. And the plan really was to hold at least half for tomorrow for the short. And um, I mean, provided it didn't just start rallying. I ended up closing out some here at 62, 62 and a half sort of range. And held half overnight as well um it's not particularly strong and we'll see what happens in the morning i'm not too sure about this short you know it didn't quite follow through with the sell-off here you know this, this break below the opening candle range of 62 so i was kind of expecting a bit more of a maybe a retest into a continuation down the initial target was around 54 cents i wasn't quite expecting a gap fill to 50 or 49 or whatever it was but that was the plan. Didn't quite go to plan. Looking for short VWAP. Didn't get there. Closed out at the standard deviation band. And you know what? I'm pretty happy with the trade so far. Still holding half. And if it gaps up tomorrow morning, first thing, then I'm just out. If it gaps up, just straight out. Just going to cut it. Uh, BD1. Again, another fucking horrifying match trade. Uh, we went long here. Ended up closing out uh, for a tick or two loss. It just, it's just shit. Um... There was opportunities, I guess. Opportunities to short. I don't even recall if there were shorts available for this one. But once it started selling off, let me bring up the one minute chart. It's a little cleaner to look at. Yeah, so there was this opening action here, this this break. That might have been an opportunity to go short. I, I Honestly, I don't recall if there were shorts available. I, I don't think I even tried. I kind of let this one go. So lately, there's been a bit of an issue with matching longs. So if we go back to Novati Group, NOV, uh, this one was sitting at, if I just close the, the VWAP bands, this one was sitting at, and this is just from my memory, it was sitting at around 60 cents for the indicative match price at about 10.02 a.m. Right, the earliest this can open is 10.06.30. And then it maybe ticked again, a few, uh, every, like every 15 seconds, it did a, a half tick, you know, 60, 60, 60 and a half, 61, 61 and a half. And then somewhere around here at 62 and a half, we've got one minute left to match and it fucking just shoots up. Shoots up to 70. Now, someone was messaging me earlier today and going, well, I got butchered on NOV, you know, how do I know when to match trade this? How do I know when it's bad? Um, and I kind of thought about this as well because I was, I was eyeing it off and I don't have too many situations where the match or the indicative price just shoots up in the final minutes. Now, on a stock like NOV, right, in the less than $1 range, every tick kind of matters. When you've got in the $10 range, you know, you've got $10.20 and it shoots up 10 ticks, you're like, okay, who cares? That's, that's 10 ticks on a $10 stock. It's not a big deal because the cost per tick is going to be, what, 5, 10, 15 bucks per tick, 20? And, and the size on something like Novati would probably be more like 100 a tick, 50 a tick, 200 a tick. Obviously, much larger size per tick is usually what happens on these smaller denomination stocks. Now, when a smaller denomination stock rallies like this into the open, what I guess the issue that's left is let's just draw it over here. So we got, let's say, from 62 and a half, let's have a visual order book to 70. 
how thick is every line going to be on the order book? In the final minute, when this gaps up from 60, let's say 63, from 63 to 70, in the final minute, how thick do you think the bids are going to be in the order book? Right? They're not going to be that thick. You're probably going to have a few hundred, few thousand shares, whatever. You're not going to have monstrous, thick order book that'll make you feel safe. In hindsight, perhaps I should have left this one alone. Perhaps not necessarily short it on the match, but just leave it alone would probably have been the better idea. But something to keep in mind, I mean, it's not something that I've experienced too much. It's something I'll keep in mind the next time it happens. After all, this is hindsight, and the idea is to learn to be a better trader after all. And this is something that I haven't experienced before, but something that may be worth taking into consideration. I'll try and find the... Uh, the Spark replay for this one, and I will upload it. I'll upload it tomorrow or later tonight. And you can see, and I haven't looked at it yet, but this is my expectation is that the book would have been thin, whereas the sellers might have been thicker. Right, if we split the book here, you've got the bids, you've got the ask. Really terrible demonstration here, but you get the idea visually. The the Every line has a thicker amount of shares, a larger amount of shares, which makes a thicker book on the ask and a thinner book on the bid because we've got a, a final shoot up. I suspect that's what happened in this case. And uh, well, I guess I'll just have to go double check and upload the uh, Spark replay for you guys. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you found it useful at all, this hindsight video, then please do hit that sub button. If you're already subbed, then I can hit that like button for me. Cheers, ladies and gents.